2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 31. And Barzillai, the Gileadite. Now the Gileadites are from Manasseh. Numbers 26. Looks like 30 and 20. It's like Numbers 26, 29. So they're Jewish people. Came down from Roglan and went over Jordan as the river with the king to conduct him over Jordan. So David is on the east side of the Jordan River. He crosses over in that ferry boat into Israel. And Barzillai comes with him into Israel. Now Barzillai was very aged man. So what is a very aged man in the Bible? Even four score years old. A score being 20, four times 20, 80 years old. Is a well-aged man in the Bible. And we compare that 80 to what Abraham was. 90, 100 years old having a son. So, 80 years old. And he had provided the king substance while he laid at Maharam. For he was a very great man. That, that means he had a lot of substance. Second Samuel 17 Verse 27. This is when David's on the run. 2 Samuel 17, 27. And it came to pass when David was come to Mahanam, that Shobai, the son of Nahash, of Rebbeth, the children of Ammon, and Micah, the son of Amiel, of Lodibar, and Barzillai, the Gilead of Roglam, there he is, brought beds, and basins, earthen vessels, and wheat, and barley, and flour, and parched corn, and beans, and lentils, and parched pulse, and honey, and butter, and sheep, and cheese of kind, for David and all the people that were with him to eat. For they said, The people is hungry, and weary, and thirsty in the wilderness. So, Barzillai, here's one of the men that David's on the run with his, his, his army, his family, all. And he came to David. He's a lover of David. He has respect for David. And he brought him food. Now as David comes back across the Jordan River in victory into Israel. Here's Barzillai again. King, I want to be with you in this moment. I'm 80 years old. I want to be with you. In verse 33, the king said to Barzillai, Come thou over with me. And I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. Come with me. I'll take care of you. You took care of me. There's one thing about David you'll see in the character of David. He's not ever left slacking. You take care of him. You do something for him. He's going to provide back. So it's like, hey, you know, you brought me things. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you 80 years old. As he done with Mephibosheth. And Barzillai said unto the king, how long have I to live? And who knows that? That's a good question. That's one of the questions I try to raise with my street preaching. I tell them, we go in the morning. You may not ever see the afternoon. We don't know how long we got. That I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem. Now look at that. He said, you know what, king? The short difference between here and Jerusalem, I may die. And I am this day four score years old, 80 years old. And can I discern between good and evil? His mind is gone. His thoughts are gone. His reasoning is gone. He's past the age. He's like, do I really have time to study to be prudent of matters that go before me? And can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink. He's lost his taste. He can't tell no more. His taste buds are gone. Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? His ears are going. Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my Lord the King? David was a burden to you, sir. You brought beds and food and all David's trying to do is return the favor, take care of you. Notice David has reached out to an elderly man whose work is doing something 
for the nation of Israel. I'll take care of you. And the king's like, well, I don't want to be a burden to you. Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan. I'll go over with you some of the way with the king. And why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? You're going to take care of it? No, that's okay. I love you, David. But it's okay. I'm okay. Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again. That I may die in my own city. Let me go die where my family is at. The ancient landmark of my city. And be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. Let me go to my family graveyard. But behold thy servant, Chinham. Let him go over with my lord, the king. And do to him what shall seem good unto thee. Imputation. There it is. That is the born again Bible believing Christian right there. That is me. The day that I received Christ as my Savior, and it said, Here are the sins of Stiley Hayward. I am placing them upon my son on the cross, the shed blood. All the sins that Stiley has done is going upon Jesus. What do I get? All the righteousness of Jesus Christ I am going to charge to you. Now, Philemon is a perfect example. Philemon, verse 18. We're looking at imputation. It's a Bible doctrine to put on someone else account. If I were to go to your bank and put $1,000 in your account from me, I imputed $1,000. In verse 18 of Philemon, if he had wronged thee or owed thee aught, Put that on my account. And that's Jesus Christ. Father, every sin that he has done, he's confessed it, put it on me. And when you see him, you put my righteousness upon him. So, we got a great understanding of a man who is a type of Jesus Christ, David, and a man who we don't even know. Who is Chinnam? Who is this guy? I don't know. Who am I? Of all the nations and languages and people of all the world, who knows me? Not many people. And yet I'm known by the King. I'm known by the, by the Lord Jesus Christ. I am known by God. Here David becomes a type of God and this Barzillai, he becomes a type of Jesus Christ. And he turns to David, the, the, the King, the, the God, and says, Here's Chinham. Whatever you're going to do to me, which is well, taken care of, sitting at the king's table, you do it to him. You do it to him in my name. And everything that's great and wonderful and all the promises that God has for the born-again Bible-believing Christian are all through Jesus Christ. Now let's look at some references here. 1 Kings 2.7 1 Kings 2 7. Again, we saw this the other night. This is David's charge to Solomon. David, before he dies, Solomon is the king. There's a joint reign at the end of David's life with Solomon. And 1 Kings 2 7. But show kindness unto the sons of Baruzai, the Gilead. There it is. And let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, thy brother. Well, look at that. Look at that. He tells me, we, we read early the other day, he says, as far as Shimei, man, you go after that man. But Barzillai and his sons. Not only is Jesus Christ the Son of God, but through Jesus Christ, I am a Son of God. To the Holy Spirit. And every son that's of Jesus Christ. Oh we're going to be at that table of God forever. Because of Barzillai. Because of Jesus Christ. That imputation. And it's a wonderful study. Let's look at Ezra 2.61. Ezra 
Is he Ezra? How far does this go? Ezra 261. And this is also report, we won't go there, but Nehemiah, if you want to write, 763. What we're going to read in Ezra 261. 61. And of the chief of the children of the priest, that's me, Revelation 1. A born again Christian is a priest. We just don't give ourselves titles. We don't do that. So I'm a priest. The children of Habala, the children of Kos, the children of Barzillai, which took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gilead. Uh, what, what did I say? Manasseh. And was called after their name. There they are in the registry of Ezra when they go back to the land. Now, they can't find their names as a priest. Because they're not official priests of Levi, but they're in the priesthood. I am a priest, but I am not a Levi. I am a priest after the order of Judah through Jesus Christ. But I'm a priest. I can't show you my pedigree from Levi. But I can show you my pedigree, my pedigree, pedigree of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Of the tribe of Judah. He came unto his own, his own received. That's us. Barzillai and his family show up when they're going to rebuild that temple. The temple hasn't even been built in 2 Samuel. And when he talks about him before Samuel, his son, the temple hasn't been built. It's going to be. And then we're looking at the temple's been destroyed. It has been conquered by Babylon. And we see in Ezra again, Nehemiah, there they are. That's a heritage. And what did Barzillai do? He provided the needs for King David on the run. Nehemiah 763. You want to see another? Coincidency Matthew 7. David being a type of Jesus Christ. And Barzillai. All right. You gave me clothes when I was naked. You fed me when I was hungry. You visited me when I was desolate. When I was in prison, you came to me. When did we do that to you? When Barzillai comes to David with, with food and bedding and drinks and asses, and he's not like Mithibosheth Zibai. Zibai, he had alternative motives. But Mike, I mean, uh, Bazillai comes to David because he loves David. And David has a need and David's in trouble. And Barzillai would never realize in chapter 19 what the offer of David's got. And then so, I help the king. What happens? Come sit at my table in the millennium. And look at his children showing up in Ezra and Nehemiah. And probably the children will be in the millennium. But may not know who they are today, but they'll probably be in the millennium. You know the record bites that you, you read in Jeremiah? There are still people around, and God said, because you obeyed your father, my people didn't. You, your father's not going to ever want to not have a child sit before me. And they're still around today. I was talking to a friend today at the flea market. If you can explain anything, I told the guy, I said, you know, we're both love the Lord and everything. I said, I will pay your travel. I will pay your food. I will pay your lodging. I'll pay everything you need to do. If you can go over and find me a Babylonian. Go over and find me an Assyrian. And yet, there's one race of people that's most hated by all the world. And you can find a Jew. Explain that. That's one nation protected by God. So you see the Christian here, imputation. You see those are going to help Jews. David is a Jew. David's a type of Christ. In verse 37, again, in 2 Samuel 19, Let thy servant, I pray, thee turn back again, that I may die in my own city, and be buried in the grave of my father. 
and of my mother. But behold thy servant Chinham, who is he? Let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which seems good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan. And when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him and returned unto his own place. And the king went on to Gilgal, and Chilham went on with him. And all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Now here we go again. Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away? Why have you guys not gone over and got them? Judah went over and got him. And had brought the king and his household. And all David's men with him over Jordan. Where were you Israel? Judah went and got him. Say, hey come on. Here's peace. Come king. And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel. Because the king is near of kin to us. True. Wherefore then be ye angry for this matter. Have you eaten at all of the king's cost? That's the first time that word shows up. Cost. The king's taking care of us. We live under the king. Or have he given us any gift? Now 43 is important. And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king. You see, the nation of Israel did not split under Solomon. It's our race split here. We got 10 more parts better than your two parts. Who do you think you are? There's already a civil war again. He just got over with a civil war with Absalom. And now he's crossed the Jordan River and Israel, 10 tribes, that's us. Judah's saying, hey, listen, he's our family. We went and got with, got, got with him. We went with him when he was on the run. Where were you guys? You guys were backing up Absalom. And you see this constant fight over this kingdom between Israel north and Judah south. Which Benjamin has been swallowed up. Uh, I forget. There's a couple other tribes that are in Judah. They get swallowed. I think Simeon one of them. Uh, I can be wrong. But you now see 10 verses 2. It did not just happen in Solomon's time. It's already begun here. It's begun with David. This throne. When Jesus came. And as prophesied. He came on that ass into the city. Hosanna. What did they want? They wanted Jesus to conquer the Roman nation. And they wanted Jesus to put them as rulers and authorities over the land. And then when they realized that Jesus was going to die on the cross, that ain't our Messiah, that ain't our conqueror, that ain't our victory. Victory is not in the cross and the resurrection. The victory would be you kick Rome's out of here. You get Rome out of our land. That's why they defile the cross. Jesus did not kick out the Roman government. And you got Americans in churches today, and I hate to keep saying it, but they want a Jesus that will kick out the Republic, I mean the Democrats, and give us all Republicans and one nation under God from sea to sign and she sea, even though it's two oceans, you're too stupid to even know where you're at. And that we're gonna have no taxes, we're gonna have a and dump and do, and we're gonna have not Jesus. As a ruler of this nation, we're going to have a Republican, as Ronald Reagan, as the Bush clan, as Trump. All these people, they're God sent. They're, no, 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 no. I wait for Jesus Christ to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. Are you going to go to the Holy Land? It ain't holy. There's a bunch of Catholics and Muslims and other kind of religions and 
and carnal Baptists over now drive around in vans listening to Muslims tell you about the story, listening to Roman Catholics tell you about the perverted Bible story that this is where Jesus. And I have been told when you go to the Holy Land, this is where Jesus died. Excuse me. Hey, ho, oh, oh, ho, hey. Didn't the Bible say he died without the city? Why are you telling me he died in Jerusalem? Bible perversion. Bible perversion. I don't go with Bible perversion. There's a fight in that land for everybody to get that piece of land that God says is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The United Nations don't like it. The Middle East don't like it. But God likes one group of people, the Jewish people. And here under David, there are 10 verses 2. And the date here I got, they say B.C. 1023. So it's already split under David. And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, we have ten parts in the king. If we got ten parts and you got two parts, twelve, right? Where's the unity of the nation? There is none. Where were the ten tribes just before David went over to Judah? I mean, went over to Jordan. They're with Absalom. Somebody took Absalom's side. Everybody that went across the Jordan River with David were on David's side. This is Shimei. Oh, curse be the king. Uh-oh, he won. Oh, king, forgive me, please forgive me. I'm so sorry, king. And that's what Israel's doing. You know, if we treat the king and we give him more portions than what he's had, he'll love us and he'll give us all kinds of good gifts. Verse 42 at the end. And Judah says, listen, David's taking care of us all the time. Ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. Judah is not the ten tribes of Israel. It's spelt different. Why then did ye despise us, that our advice should not be first... Wait a minute. Why then do you despise us that our advice should not be first had in being back our king? We just read the previous chapter and the question, why have you not brought back the king? And Judah said, we'll go get him. Where were you, Israel? You didn't think the king was coming. That's the standard of Israel today, the Jew. The king ain't, they're not looking for the Messiah. They're not interested in building that temple. They want money. They want the finances of the world. They want anything but God, Jehovah. They even got just as bad temples as the church has just as bad churches. There are carnal living Jewish people who think they're doing what God wants them to do, just like the churches. And God says, no, you're making me sick, just as much as the churches. And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer, the only place that word shows up, than the words of the men of Israel. <laughs> so Judah's got that lion. <laughs> And Israel will go into captivity before Judah goes in captivity. There will be not one proper king in Israel. But there will be proper kings in Judah. Just as much as bad kings in Judah. There's something about those ten northern tribes. <laughs> and here's where they start showing the split. 